Welcome to the heart. Let's look at the function, the pericardial sac, and the heart's location. First, the function. You already know the function. The heart functions as a pump, and that pumps blood through the circulatory system. The circulatory system is a closed circuit consisting of heart and blood vessels. So here's the heart, and then here's the blood vessels. We say it's a closed circuit because the red blood cells don't ever actually leave um, the veins and arteries and heart. They stay inside that circuit or inside that system. There's two circuits. We have the pulmonary circuit, and then we also have the systemic circuit. Let's look at each one of those. So the pulmonary circuit is when we have the heart pumps carbon dioxide rich blood to the lungs. And there the carbon dioxide exhaled and it's exchanged for oxygen. And then it returns oxygen rich blood back to the heart. So that's the pulmonary circuit. And this, then the systemic circuit is when the heart delivers oxygen rich blood to the body. So here's the heart pumping oxygen rich blood to the superior portion of the body and then the inferior portion of the body. And then in these capillaries, what we have is transcapillary exchange. We have oxygen being released and goes into the tissues, and then carbon dioxide is picked up by the blood, and then that carbon dioxide rich blood returns back to the heart. Let's look at the coverings of the heart. We have the pericardium or the pericardial sac. That's a sac that encloses the heart. And there's an outer layer called a fibrous pericardium. We can see that well here. This is the fibrous pericardium here, the very outside edge. And then there's an inner layer called the serous pericardium, which isn't shown too well on this. Now the serous pericardium has two layers. It has a parietal pericardium, so that's here. And then the visceral pericardium, which is actually um, on the surface of the heart. And then the pericardial space or cavity is in between here, and that's where there's fluid, not very much, between 15 and 50 milliliters worth. So let's, let's examine this a little closer. Let's say that your heart is like your fist. If you were to push your fist into this balloon, you see that we have two layers, even though it's um, continuous. We have an inner layer, that'd be like the visceral pericardium, and then we have the outer layer, that's like the parietal pericardium. So we can make sense of this using a different image. So here's the fibrous pericardium, this outside edge. And then just deep to that, we have the, um, just deep to that, we have the parietal pericardium. Remember the parietal pericardium is part of the serous pericardium. And then the other part of the serous pericardium is the visceral pericardium that's like bound to the outer surface of the heart. So this parietal pericardium, it runs up here and that kind of folds over on itself and then becomes the visceral pericardium. This is a zoomed in image. So here's the fibrous pericardium and then we have the serous pericardium below it. Remember that's made up of the parietal pericardium, folds over on itself and then that becomes the visceral pericardium and the visceral pericardium or sometimes called the epicardium, that's what's actually bound to the surface of the heart. And then the space in between is the parietal cavity. Now there's a lot of vocab there and some of it overlaps and is confusing. So we can distill this down to something um, less confusing. Let's just think about this outside layer being the parietal pericardium and this inside layer being the visceral pericardium. And the space in between is the pericardial cavity. Now let's examine the wall of the heart. So if we could take a chunk out of the heart, um, we'd see a layer in the inside, we'd see this middle layer, and then this outer layer here. So we've already looked at this outer covering, the pericardial sac, remember that's the fibrous pericardium, and then just deep to the fibrous pericardium, we have the parietal pericardium, where that parietal pericardium comes around and it folds on itself, and then that becomes the visceral epicardium, as we can see here, and the visceral epicardium um, or sorry, the visceral pericardium is sometimes called the epicardium. So just deep to the epicardium, we have the myocardium. That's the heart muscle. And then the inside of the heart is lined with the endocardium. The endocardium has connective tissue and also um, uh, simple squamous epithelium. So here we are, epicardium or visceral pericardium is the outermost layer. 
That was this. And then we have the middle layer. It's the myocardium. That's, that's the muscle that contracts to pump the blood. And then the inner layer is the endocardium. And what's neat about this, remember, is it's got connective tissue and that simple squamous epithelium. They call that simple squamous epithelium here endothelium, but it's just simple squamous epithelium. That endothelium is continuous with the blood vessels that are connected to the heart. So when the blood flows through the heart um, it's, and, and, and the vessels, it's always bumping up against a smooth surface. That's why we don't have the platelets um, aggregating or, or, or fibrinogen coming out or anything like that. The location of the heart. It's located in the mediastinum. Remember the mediastinum was one of those cavities that sits inside the thoracic cavity between the two lungs. The mediastinum houses the heart in addition to like the trachea and the esophagus. So here's a transverse or horizontal or cross section of a cadaver. We can see that the heart does lie um, a little bit to the left of the midline. You can see that well on this animation too. So here's the midline of the heart, sorry, the midline of the, of the body or the longitudinal axis of the body and the heart lies to the left of it. And you notice it's also oblique to the longitudinal axis of the body. So if this was the longitudinal axis of the body, notice the heart doesn't run like up and down, it runs to the side. This is the longitudinal axis of the heart, so obliquely. And then lastly, the heart is rotated slightly to the left. The superior portion of the heart is called the base. The base is located, if we want to be precise, which we do because this will determine how we listen to heart sounds. The base of the heart is in between the second and the third rib, where these the costal cartilages. So it's called the intercostal space. Um, some textbooks say it's at the third rib. Whether it's in between the second and third or at the third, I don't think is too important for us. But then the heart extends inferiorly, and then this is the apex of the heart. And in this illustration, um, it goes to the fifth rib. I think more accurately, it extends a little bit further down um, and exists in the fifth intercostal space. Remember, that just means between the ribs. So the inter between the ribs at the fifth intercostal space would be, would be down here. 